if uh, any of you have heard me uh, talk at the center or or uh, done an, an done any of the eight week classes or anything like that with me you've probably heard me talk about corralling corralling um like corralling uh horses or corralling livestock and in this case it's corralling thoughts uh and i look at uh our contemplative practices uh our practice of uh, when we contemplate something like a subject or an object or um, in this case, um, words, contemplating words and verses and phrases and th that type of thing. And I, I like to look at it as this type of contemplation is corralling because when it's done correctly, it's like putting everything in one area, like uh, corralling horses. Uh, in South Dakota, we use uh, our corrals are usually round so that the livestock doesn't get or the horses don't get, um, horses or livestock too, I suppose, but uh, so that they, they, they don't get, go into a corner and get all bunched up. So if you have a corral without any corners, uh, everything just kind of usually keeps, keeps easy to keep things flowing and keep, keep things moving, but they're corralled in a certain area, they can't get out. And if we can do that with our thoughts and our thinking, um, it can be a very, very good practice for us, um, a practice in uh, contemplation. And th the, the reason I bring this up is because it's a very good practice in mindfulness. And it's also a practice that we can use in our, in our sitting practice as well as like our, our formal meditation practice. W what I call formal meditation practice is basically something that we're going to be doing here pretty soon, where we designate a time for meditation, we designate a spot or a place for our meditation, and um, maybe even designate or have an intended length of our meditation. So it's a it's like a formal practice, all these elements come together and we go, I'm going to meditate now, you know, that kind of thing. And um, that's really a part of my job is, is talking to people about, you know, their, their formal practice meditation. But also uh, something that we can do in our daily lives is to take a subject and contemplate on it throughout our day. And um, I think it's a very, very good habit we can get into. Something that's very, uh, very useful as, as far as you know, bringing up this component of spirituality and what we would call mindfulness in our everyday living. I recently picked up a new book by uh, David R. Hawkins, and um, let's see if you can see that. The ego is not the real you. Um, wisdom to transcend the mind and realize the self, the self with a capital S. You notice the self is oops, <laughs> has a capital S there, and that's not the small the small self or the ego self it's it's the realized self you know know thyself that type of thing and this particular book um although david hawkins died in uh, he died in sedona that's where he lived and he died in uh, 2012 and um i'm not sure how this book came out um uh, i think it was something that he had started and and, and um had intended to put together and then they put together for him afterwards, maybe. Um, or maybe it's just some of his teachings that somebody compiled. I, I don't, I didn't really get the story on it yet. I'm sorry, I got these little bookmarkers here and for an apparent reason. But when you open up the book, it's, it's this kind of thing where it just has different phrases, different paragraphs on different subjects. And this particular book is broken into to three, uh, three different subjects. What I've been doing with this particular book is taking a phrase, like here's a phrase, at all times remain aware that the real you is not the ego, refuse to identify with it. You know, a very simple phrase. And what I'll do is I'll read um, 
actually I'll read a few of these phrases and find one that really resonates with me and kind of carry it with me throughout the day and um, you know pause and stop for a moment and ask myself what what is that phrase that I'm to be contemplating today you know and it's it's really a, a, a way of really you know taking uh, taking a precious moment in the day and and really allowing uh, you know the the, the, allowing it to go within. Um, here's another book that um, Buddhism Day by Day. Here's the book, and this is a this this book is a hardcover, but it's again here's what it looks like inside. There's more white than there is is dark. You know, there's a lot of lot of space. There's another book by uh, Mark Mark Nepo here. This is a very popular book. Find a book that has um, uh, different phrases or even a book that we are really enjoying and, and find a phrase in there that really resonates with us to actually turn that phrase around and put in our own words what it means to us and how we feel about it. Because the, the more emotion that we have behind it, the better. And the better understanding we will have if we use our own words rather than somebody else's words. Uh, some people like to memorize these phrases and these paragraphs, um, and some people just like to, you know, uh, conjure up that feeling or that emotion that 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 paragraph might bring up for for a person. Um, so, basically, this is meditating on a verse or or a paragraph. You want to we want to center our, center our meditation around a specific topic. So this, this paragraph will, you know, it'll bring up a topic for us, something, something from a spiritual context, something that we want to take a look at. So we might have, have a book like any, any one of these, and not every paragraph is going to resonate with us, but, you know, we just want to find something that does. We want to focus on the meaning of the paragraph or of the phrase or even of one word, you know, take one word and, and and focus on the meaning of that. We can do that for, you know, our, our throughout our entire day and then find uh, a new one the following day. Um, I take notes. You might want to consider taking notes um, about the key elements or the highlights, memorizing or writing it out or actually re rephrasing um, the version of, of a chosen passage uh, is a very good idea. And again, you know, to feel the emotions, you know, when we're doing it. So I thought what we would do tonight to give you kind of a, 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 a taste of this, if you haven't done this yet, um, instead of taking one paragraph, like reading a paragraph in the morning and tear, taking it with you and carrying it with you throughout your day, um, what I thought I would do is um, we'll do a meditation and I'll read a paragraph, maybe one paragraph every five to, to eight minutes. And so we, we will contemplate that one paragraph. If you choose, you don't have to, there's no, no, no demands here. Um, but you, if you want to uh, contemplate that one paragraph for maybe eight or 10 minutes until the next paragraph comes up and see how that feels for you. Sound like an idea, sound like something might work. Okay. And I'll be, in case you're wondering, I'll be using David, the David Hawkins book for these phrases. I might grab one of the other ones, but I think I'll just stay with one book. Please make yourself comfortable. Close your eyes if you like. So by popular definition, meditation is a practice of letting go. It's a time for us to rest in the present moment and to notice the uh, any kind of negativity that might arise from, from the emotions that we've been carrying throughout the day or any kind of other situations that that uh, 
might be a part of our lives at the moment and see if there's something that we can let go of that we can benefit by. And there's also a, a method of contemplation uh, that is a part of meditation as well. And it's talked about in Buddhism, in the Satipatthana and the Anapanasati sutras, uh, towards the end of these, these sutras, dealing with Dharma or dealing with the wisdom or the insights that the Buddha is actually lending us uh, in his teachings. So I can see the Buddha really uh, taking his insights to heart and re remembering them, not, not forgetting any part of his, his, uh, his insights, as, really as a part of his spiritual journey. And I can imagine that he took these insights and, and actually uh, used them and contemplated them. And uh, he certainly, by his teachings, you can tell that he definitely wanted others to contemplate these same insights as well, because I think he really felt that the insights that he had will, will be or have been the insights that other people have had too, because they are the truth. They're, they're, they're the ultimate reality. And many of them are nothing complicated. They're just realizations of, of uh, the meaning of life, something that uh, is really essential for our awakening, our uh, eventual enlightenment. So contemplation is a real practice and sometimes we don't use it uh, very much in the West, particularly in our, our formal practice of sitting meditation. But it, we certainly can, we certainly can use it in our formal practice um, as we will be doing here now. But this is also something that we can take off of the cushion and out into the world with us too. And it's highly encouraged that we do this. So just bring your attention to the breath for the moment and try to really try to center yourself. I, I'd like to have everybody really become as present as they possibly can. Casting aside the past and the future What has happened is of no consequence now at this very moment. And what we think might happen can certainly be let go of for a few moments, hopefully throughout this meditation practice. This is a very, very good training of the mind to be able to do this, to set things aside, give ourselves that mini vacation that most of us deserve these days. So set aside the past and the future for a while. Give yourself permission to do that. Again, I'm going to read a phrase or a paragraph, and you can do what you wish with it, but I, I hope you can uh, contemplate its meaning. And uh, if, if it's something that you didn't catch all the words, this is very common. Just try to focus on the, app, the part of it, the aspect of it that resonates with you that might bring up some emotion or something, something that that is clear, that when you hear it is very clear. And even if it's very deeply understandable, it's still worth contemplating. Here's this, the first paragraph. All thinking from a spiritual viewpoint is merely vanity, 
illusion, impopacity. The less one thinks, the more delightful life becomes. Thinkingness eventually becomes replaced by knowingness. That one is, does not really need any thought at all. It is helpful, therefore, to make a decision to stop mental conversation and useless babbling. Here's another paragraph. Once thoughts, like objects, are depersonalized, they become devalued and lose their attraction. Thoughts and feelings arise from desire, and the mind desires what it values. 
to clear the mind, merely note that nothing at all is of special or unique value or worth, except by vested, superimposed, and projected belief. Therefore, withdraw value, worth, importance, and interest.
another paragraph. A useful decision or choice is to decide to stop mentally talking about everything and refrain from interjecting comments, opinions, preferences, and value statements. It is therefore a discipline to just watch without evaluating, investing worth in, editorializing, commenting, or having preferences about what is witnessed.
another paragraph. Every life experience, no matter how tragic, contains a hidden lesson. When we discover and acknowledge the hidden gift that is there, a healing takes place. Another paragraph. Letting go of the old is facilitated by willingness, courage, and faith. 
spiritual progress literally benefits all mankind in that it rises, raises the general level of consciousness. Even one iota makes a difference. Another obstacle to spiritual growth is impatience. This can be overcome by surrender.
one more paragraph. One pointedness of mind means to focus on the crest of the wave of witnessing, experiencing, plus being willing to surrender perceived loss or gain. That is the primary skill that is needed. If you like to, you can bring your hands together at your heart center. May each one of us and all beings be well, happy, and peaceful. May no harm come to us. May no difficulties come to us. May we all meet with spiritual and worldly success. May we have the patience, the courage, and the understanding to meet and overcome any problems or difficulties that we might face in life. Thank you. So um, I think you'll probably find that was a little bit different meditation than we usually do on Wednesday nights, but um, something to work with and something to use and um, not necessarily the way we did it now, but that was just to kind of give you a taste of maybe the possibilities of, of taking these phrases or, or even single words or whatever the topic might be and, and corralling it and using it throughout your day or in your formal meditation practice. So um, any questions from anybody on any of, any of that? Yeah, I was wondering if um, yeah, I probably couldn't find it online. So, um, if, is there any way that you could send me the fourth quote, the the healing one, or I think that's what it was. The one, the quote about healing. Yeah. Well, well you'll you'll see you'll see it on the on the um, on Patreon, right? And then you'll be able to. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's yeah, true. That'll work. Yeah. And if you if you had have any questions or or anything about it, you know that's cool. Um, yeah. The uh, the uh, every every life experience, no matter how tragic, contains a hidden lesson. When we discover and acknowledge the hidden gift 
that it is that is there, a healing takes place. Is that the? Yeah, and it, it was all from the same the same book that you mentioned it, the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. David Hawkins. Yeah. So we'll see everybody next Wednesday. And if there's anything I can help you with in your practice, you know, please let me know. And, you know, uh, any, anything at all, let me know. Send an email or try to get a hold of me. All right. Thank you, everybody. And we'll see you next week. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.